God of War Ragnarok is one of the biggest games of the year, and as a sequel to a reboot, you'd think you'd know everything about it. But going in, you actually don't. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, 10 Things God of War Ragnarok Doesn't Tell You. Starting off at number 10, how to access Mispelheim. In the first game, you eventually gain access to a series of difficult arena challenges in the realm of fire, Mispelheim. These challenges return in God of War Ragnarok, and completing them actually earns you some pretty good rewards. To reach this realm, though, you have to collect two Mispelheim seeds. You get one early in the game in the realm of the dwarves, uh, found in a chest near Mudvitter's Rig, which is part of the first real favor of the game. So, that first seed's not too hard to find. The game makes you wait for a really long time before you can find the second seed, though. So, the second seed is also found in the realm of the dwarves, but the game, well, it's almost over before you can finally get it. If you want to know where it is exactly, the second seed's found in Albrecht's Hollow, which you can reach from the Dragon Beach after getting Durland's Hammer for the Spirit of Rebellion favor. You just go in the cave, to the left of the big dwarven statue, and you'll soon find the legendary chest containing the second seed required to reach Mispelheim. You won't be able to get up to the area until after starting the Spirit of Rebellion favor, which gets added automatically at a certain point in the story, so don't worry about trying to do it before then. It's a totally optional area, so unless you're absolutely doing every favor you come across, it is easy to miss. If you're itching to find Mispelheim after getting the first seed at the start of the game, here it is. So don't worry about searching every single chest you find. It's going to be a long time before you get that second seed. At number 9, Berserker Souls, or this game's version of the Valkyries, probably one of the most satisfying parts of God of War from 2018, was taking down the optional Valkyrie bosses. Uh, these fights were very tough, much tougher than anything in the main story, and if you're wondering if these fights return for Ragnarok, well, yes, they do. Instead of 8 Valkyries in various locations, there's 12 Berserker Souls, which are found by interacting with gravestones dotted around the world. You'll start seeing them relatively early, but you can't open them up to fight the boss without first getting the hilt of Skofnum. You do get it as part of the main story, but fights against the Berserkers are completely optional. And while you can fight these guys right away, probably best to wait a little while because you're going to need to build up your strength. They're going to mess you up otherwise. Unlike the Valkyries, who all had a few different attacks but were otherwise mostly the same, the Berserkers can be wildly different in both appearance and fighting style, so you never really know exactly what you're dealing with. Perfecting your parry pretty much the most essential thing to beating them because it only takes a few good hits to kill Kratos and these guys are really aggressive. Thankfully, the combat feels a lot more responsive in Ragnarok compared to God of War 2018. So while in many ways these fights are tougher than the Valkyrie battles, you won't struggle with the controls as much, so it evens out a little bit. But if you're looking for the ultimate challenge in the game, seek these guys out. And number eight, Hell's Touch is an amazing runic attack. Runic attacks generally pretty good anyways, but many of them lose their effectiveness when taking on the tougher opponents you'll find later in the game. Some of the best runic abilities are the least flashy ones. That was true in the first God of War, and it's true in Ragnarok. If you're thorough, you're going to be swimming in light runic attacks. My personal favorite uh, for the Leviathan Axe is probably one of the most basic. It's called Hell's Touch, and while it doesn't look like much, it's really fast, recharges relatively quickly, and has some of the highest stun potential of any light runic attack. Its ability to stun is actually what makes it so good. You can interrupt almost any attack once this ability is fully upgraded, and it becomes essential uh, against some of the toughest enemies you're going to be facing. Whether you need an opening to get a combo or some space to heal yourself, Hell's Touch is a major lifesaver. To get it, you'll need to find a legendary chest in the burrows where the area of the Song of Sands favor is found, which is in the Forbidden Sands area of Alfheim. It's not the main reward for completing this area, instead it's down a side path found after clearing out some hive material on the wall. It's an ability that's easy to miss, but it's very worth hunting down because it can make certain enemy encounters just way, way easier. And number seven, uh, the queerest of Raven's Tears. One issue a lot of people are gonna run into in God of War Ragnarok is at a certain point, enemies just start doing a lot of damage. Unless you dedicate all your equipment to improving defense and vitality, tougher enemies are going to start taking out gigantic chunks of your life with pretty much every hit. What you need in situations like this is a good source of healing, and probably one of the best pieces of equipment for that is the Raven Tier chest piece. What makes it so good is its chance ability, which every time you hit an enemy, there's a low chance that you're going to activate a healing mist, which slowly regenerates your health. Now, the effect doesn't seem that powerful at first, but with a decent luck stat, 
you're going to be triggering the healing mist pretty constantly. And with any enhancements or equipment that increases the healing effect, it becomes even better. The only way to get this armor is from killing ravens, which aren't usually too hard to find because of the glowing green effect that makes them stand out from the environment. Up to get the queerest, you need to kill 18 of the 48 total ravens, which isn't too bad and can be done relatively early into the game as long as you're thorough. The ravens might seem like another pointless collectible to you at first, but the rewards you get for killing them are pretty good and it's in your best interest to take these things out whenever you see them, even if only to get this fantastic piece of armor. And number six, how to reach the best but easiest to miss optional area. Uh, Ragnarok's got a ton of optional locations, and a lot of them are pretty easy to bypass if you're just following the main story. There's one very large and very easy to miss location near the end of the game. The area in question specifically is called the Crater. It's found in Vanaheim, and the only way to even reach this place is to complete a short side quest you might not even notice. It's called Scent of Survival, which begins by leaving the camp in Vanaheim from the western exit after a certain major story event. No spoilers here, but it's specific. There you'll find the dog, which triggers the favor. It seems minor, but this favor is required to access this entirely new area, which is easily the most elaborate in the entire game, and in my opinion, the best. It's unique for a lot of reasons, but to explain it, I I'd ruin the surprise. Just remember that if you start the Scent of Survival favor, finish it. And number five, look for Ormer. What is Ormer? It's basically the game's version of Crystal Lizards from Dark Souls. They're glowing little creatures that drop a ton of useful crafting materials, but only if you manage to catch them. They're also easy to miss because you might not even realize that they're a thing. The game never really draws your attention to them. They just look like any of the other dozens of random creatures found as part of the scenery, and they're not considered a collectible either. You can go through the entire game actually fairly easy without noticing these things, but they're worth hunting down when you see them. They're identifiable by their glow and the annoying chipmunk sounds they make, but if you try to approach them or attack them up front, they will pretty much always get away. The trick with these guys is to attack them from behind, which is easier said than done. Most of the time, you'll have to solve a small puzzle to get to the proper angle on these things, but it's usually nothing too strenuous. Honestly, the hardest part about these guys is just recognizing that they're a creature that you can kill in the first place. Uh, many environments are dotted with random things you can break or kill to get resources that are pretty easy to miss, but the Ormir, trickiest to get. That said, gives you some of the best rewards as well. And number four, use the Spartan Rage ability, Wrath, to get out of a stun really quickly. You can get a few Spartan Rage abilities in Ragnarok that you can swap between freely as you progress through the game. They all have their uses, but my favorite is the Wrath ability. And for one simple reason, it'll break you out of a stun. Now, technically, all three Spartan Rage moves break stun, but the only one that's actually useful specifically for that purpose is Wrath. Fury takes too long to recharge, and Valor leaves you vulnerable too long after triggering it. With Wrath, you immediately break out of getting stunned, and you counterattack. The reason why that's so good is simple. Uh, for certain encounters, it's one of the only ways to avoid taking damage. It's a get out of jail free card when you mess up a yellow block or get hit with a lightning attack that leaves you weakened. Instead of mashing buttons to try to escape and still taking a huge amount of damage anyway, just activate Wrath and instantly get out of the stun as well as do a little damage to the enemy as well. For certain bosses, it only takes one opening to tear you down to nothing in terms of health, even on normal. So having some way to get back control instantly is extremely useful. And number three, luck is actually a, a, an amazing stat in Ragnarok. Uh, most games, luck is kind of a junk stat that doesn't do a lot of good, but in Ragnarok, it's secretly the best stat. Well, maybe not the best, but really, really good, like up there good. What makes it so powerful is that it earns additional rewards like you'd expect, but it also makes it so chance abilities trigger more often. Almost every perk attached to a weapon or a piece of armor has a chance ability, so depending on what perks you have equipped, having them trigger more often is a huge deal. I already mentioned the Queerest of Raven's Tears, which has a chance to heal when you hit enemies, uh, but that's not the only thing that benefits from higher luck. Another fantastic perk is found on the Getumeter set, which has a chance to drop health stones and rage stones after runic attacks, and just that little bit of extra health can save your life, and if you've got a high enough luck stat on the battlefield, you're just going to be swimming in health stones, and that's not going to really be a concern. So while luck might not sound like a good stat, especially when you consider luck in so many other games, it's actually one of the best as long as you've got some good perks to use with it. 
And number two, there is a relic that can slow down time, and it is fantastic. Along with runic attacks, Kratos has some relic abilities you can use. The first one you can get increases your melee damage for a short period of time, and while that's very good, my favorite relic is definitely the Hilt of Hofen. You get it as part of the main story, too. I'm not going to spoil where, but it's fairly late in the game, and at this point you might be pretty set with your equipment, but don't sleep on this relic. It's super useful. The best use is against some of the optional endgame fights. These guys get extremely aggressive near the end of their battles, and your best option is to just wait for an opportunity, trigger this relic, and finish him off. Of course, it's a useful relic anytime, but there's nothing more annoying than nearly killing a boss uh, for it to just go crazy on you at the last second and give you no opening for an attack. For most of these guys, uh, my death comes at the very end of the fight, and that always, I mean always, sucks. You feel like you put in all this effort, and then you can sort of poop out at the end. It sucks. This relic uh, will absolutely help you avoid that frustration. And finally, at number one, use high contrast mode uh, to find hard to get collectibles. There's a lot of collectibles in this game. And some of them stand out more than others, like the Ravens, Nornir, and the Legendary Chests. But there's a lot of other stuff lying around that can be super easy to miss. Uh, if you want to collect everything but can't seem to find that last remaining lore scroll, get into the accessibility options and scroll down to high contrast mode. There you can make it so that certain objects in the game appear as high contrast color, which makes them stand out more. If you're looking for collectibles, the options you'll want to change are target color and interact color. Change those to something like red and change the background color to something they'll contrast against, like white. So the entire world's going to appear white, while anything you can interact with is going to be red, which is going to make it very easy to find any loose collectibles. It almost feels like cheating, but when the environments are this packed with details, sometimes it's easy to miss things, and these high contrast modes are fantastic for anyone looking to collect every little last collectible there is to find in the game. Also, those things actually do have a purpose. High contrast mode helps people with, you know, actual vision problems, and it's not like they put it there thinking you're not going to use it for stuff like this, too. And that's all for today. Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. If you like this video, click like. If you're not subscribed, now's a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every day of the week. Best way to see them first is, of course, a subscription, so click subscribe. Don't forget to enable notifications. And as always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. We'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.